Hi, and welcome to Eric's Electronics Workbench. In this video, we'll be taking a look at a replacement battery solution for the Tektronix 222A digital oscilloscope. This would also apply to the models 222, 222PS, and the 224 digital scopes. So let's get started. So I've had this Tektronix 222A digital scope for a while now, and like many owners of these scopes, I found that the original sealed lead acid battery no longer holds a charge. So it limits, of course, the fact that it's portable. You're always running it off of the AC adapter, which just a simple adapter that plugs in the wall and has the barrel plug on the end. But being portable is what's so desirable about these scopes and the fact that it can run on the battery power away from the bench. So um, if you're not familiar with these scopes, this is the 222A model and it's a 10 megahertz digital scope. And there's also the 224 model, which is a 60 megahertz scope. Of course, what's not to like about something with a you know, CRT on it and so compact and portable, pretty cool little scope early digital scope, really well made, neat because you can put your hand in the holder and, you know, one-handed operation like that. Two channel scope, and the inputs are over here, on the side, of course, probe storage in here, and the probes plug in through here. Now they are a special type of connector, it's not a BNC connector, so if you're looking for one of these uh, scopes and you don't have probes, make sure the probes are included um, because again the, the probes have a different type of connector on them, not a BNC connection. You can see right there. So this scope has that probe and it has a couple other probes with it. There's a, a times 10 and times 1 probes. So uh, all, all good things to have with that scope. Also there's a carrying case that goes with it and you know nice nice original case more storage on the side over here as well you can unzip that and unzip the side so that the probes can come through and uh, it can be in here um, one thing you want to watch out for is the power button on the front you don't want it to be touching the front when this flap closes and ends up you know actually turning on the scope you need to watch out for that but otherwise uh, well made case and uh, you know nice to have that as well with it of course, there's a little tilt stand underneath right here. Prop it up like so. So, equally at home on the bench or portable out in the field or, uh, you know, wherever you need to take it. So, again, the battery, the original sealed lead acid battery, long since dried up. It's not available. It's an odd size. It's actually two sealed lead acid batteries that were joined together and just an odd size. It's very difficult to replace or find a replacement for. So I was looking around and looking at what options would be available and thinking about making my own battery pack. There's videos online that you can certainly find about making your own battery packs and what's involved with that. And it's, it's very doable. So I was considering that, but wasn't completely sold on some of those ideas and what was involved and so on. So um, before we go any further, let me just take this cover off here and you can see the original battery, which is installed like this. So it just sits in there and kind of sits between these rubber blocks that are in there. Connector comes off like that. So there's this or rubber, like a foam rubber sort of material in here, and it just, just cushions the battery and plugs right onto the board. So there's it says Tektronix. That was their label. They didn't make the battery. Uh, I don't know, it may have been Panasonic or something like that. But uh, anyway, it was a uh, 2.1 amp hour, 8 volt uh, sealed lead acid battery in the original Tektronix part number. There's an inline fuse. That was a heat shrink right there. If you make your own battery pack, of course, you could repurpose this connector and, and that uh, the fuse. So after doing some research, I discovered a product that is available online made by a company called N0DY Electronics. N0DY Electronics. Now, I have no affiliation with that company. 
and it's just simply that they are the ones that make this product and if I'm understanding correctly they did not design the product initially um, but they are currently selling it and it's available on eBay and I believe on their store online directly so if you pull up your favorite search site and uh, type in N0DY uh, just those I believe it's a gentleman's call sign you will find the website and you can order directly from them and what you will get is a very well-made product. A little kit here. So get this in the picture here. So there's also an instruction sheet. I'm not going to show that. It's very well uh, written up about uh, how to install it and so I won't go into those details. It's it's straightforward but it has good pointers and safety instructions and um, you know all the information that you would need. But there was a bit of information that uh, was a little bit confusing initially and uh, I'll bring that up here about the batteries that are required. But uh, you can see what's provided is the case to, that the whole assembly goes in and of course the electronics the board, all surface mount, very well made, and this wire uh, lead is just plugs onto the board. It's separate when the kit is supplied. You just plug there, and you can see that original plug. No modifications. It's exactly the same as the original plug on that original uh, battery pack. So what's really cool about this is that you're not modifying the scope in any way. Now I should add that the batteries that this requires are lithium-ion rechargeable batteries. And if you're working with the lithium-ion batteries, you do so at your own risk. They're explosive, if not handled correctly, can certainly cause a fire, damage, injury to yourself. So if you're following along and working on this, you're doing so at your own risk. Just be careful with those batteries, um, particularly when they're being charged and discharged, no short circuits or anything like that, because they can certainly be a, a volatile type of a battery. So it does not include the batteries with the kit. They, and that's made very obvious when, when you go to place the order for the kit. However, there's two different versions of the battery and the type of battery is called an 18650. So when you go to look up an 18650 battery, it's very common there's many different sizes of that battery as far as capacity, but there's two very different designs and it's important to get the correct design or the correct style. So here's two 18650 batteries and you can see they look very very similar but if you line up the edges on the right side, you can see that the left side, the length is definitely not the same. So basically what you need for this is the flat top, which is flat on one side and flat on the other side. This being the positive, this is the negative. This type of battery, also an 18650 cell, is flat on the negative, but is a button looks like you know a fat oversized AA battery if you will but of course very different than an AA but it, it has that style with that button on the end there and of course that being the positive but you know one is uh, definitely longer than the other and they do not both fit in into the holder so if you take the wrong type with the, the button and were to try and install it, it it doesn't even come close to fitting I mean you would damage it it just it, it's never going to fit. That's not the right type. These are very common in you know, battery, uh, flashlights and other devices. But uh, if you go looking for an 18650 cell, uh, be aware you do not want one with the button end. You want the flat top type. Now, what I found works well and what I'm currently using in here is the Samsung INR 186525R. So a bit of a handle there for that whole part number. But again, INR. 18650 25R. It's a 2500 milliamp hour battery and it works very very well in this circuit in this design. It has far greater capacity than the original battery pack meaning more runtime uh, for the scope because the design of the circuit is very ingenious and it's pretty cool how it functions. 
these batteries, there's three of them, when they're installed, they're installed in parallel electrically in here. They're not in series, you're not building up the voltage. Now again, the original battery was that eight volt sealed lead acid battery. You can see on here, eight volts. Well, each of these lithium ion batteries is a 3.6 volt average. It varies when it's charging and down to when it's discharged, but an average or nominal 3.6 volts. So you go from 3.6 volts to the required 8 volts, how does that actually happen? So the design on this circuit here, and you can see there's some components on the back. Pretty cool design. It's basically a DC to DC converter that takes the battery voltage, the battery's operating in parallel, so you're getting the capacity is not when the three of them are installed, you're not getting the capacity of just the one battery, it's all three of them to, that are working together in parallel. So you're getting more capacity than just the one alone. It's taking that voltage, that 3.6 volts, because they're all in parallel, you're still getting 3.6 volts, and it runs it through the DC to DC converter and produces the eight volts that the scope needs. So very, very cool design. Now for the charging circuit, there's protection built in because the cells, you can use unprotected cells in this circuit. Uh, they, they do not have to have built-in protection. And when these are charged, um, the, the charging current, the charging voltage has to be controlled correctly. You would never just hook a power supply across these and, and try and charge them that way like you would you know, with a NICAD or, or a, a nickel metal hydride or some other type of battery or the old sealed lead acid batteries. So very different way that they need to be charged and they need to have protection for overcharging, undercharging, overcurrent and so on. And this circuit provides all of that. Well, the incoming voltage in the scope on these terminals when you're using the battery pack, which you know, plugs in the back here, the voltage that's being supplied, the scope still thinks you have the original uh, sealed lead acid battery installed. That voltage is reduced down through a DC to DC converter through the charging circuit and then each cell is charged and each cell is treated separately. There's, you can see there's three different charging circuits um, on this device. So another cool thing with this kit is that this is a 3D printed box. It's very, very well made. So all 3D printed, all uh, you know, custom design, um, comes with the label on the front, and again, 3D printed. And these are light pipes that correspond to the location of the LEDs that are on the board for the status indicators, charging power, and fault. Uh, according to the instructions, the fault light really should never turn on if it does there's something very, very wrong, but the charge and power uh, indicators, of course, come on appropriate when they need to. Um, you can see the reference to the 18650 cells, but again, that button cell or the flat top, it's not really mentioned, so watch out for that. So to install the board into the housing, there's no hardware. This board just simply fits down into the box and this offset sort of here, this notch in the board and here are not of equal lengths. So you start with the short end or the or end near the uh, power cable, drop that down and that just drops right in like so. And the batteries, of course they just fit into the holder. There's a plus and minus symbol. This middle area, it, it's a little bit confusing because down inside here there's sort of a, a plus and a minus mark and then another plus and a minus that are, they don't match, but um, that's mentioned actually in the uh, instructions as well. And they just point out that all of the batteries have the positive facing the same way. So that button, the positive end of the battery, at each location goes that direction. So you're not flipping, you know, any like that. They're all the same. So they just drop down in like so. that so very simple to install and the power cord will just come out the side there's a little notch in the housing right there and make sure that the wires are not pinched they'll just fit down in there like that and it comes with the hardware and the housing with those light pipes just fits over like so 
and there's the hardware included for the four screws, which we'll install. So when the case is assembled, like so, the power cable and connector just comes out the side. It fits right into the scope, very nicely, very well designed. It's right in here. Just drops right in, just a perfect fit. No modifications or anything required. It fits really nice right into the scope. Snug. Uh, you know, perfect fit right on those original, uh, you know, pads that were already in there. So then you just take the connector, plug that on here. Like that. So very simple, all installed. And we'll go ahead and turn this on now. There is one other thing. When that's all put together and installed, you come over here and turn the scope on. Of course, nothing happens. So, well, why is that? There's nothing wrong. There is one sort of oddity that occurs, and it's a one-time issue when the batteries are first installed um, and you first put everything together. Before the scope can be turned on, you have to power the scope through the AC adapter uh, just even momentarily. It doesn't have to be very long. And it ha they do mention it in the instructions. It's something about how the circuitry works. I don't know the details beyond that, but it causes it to, I don't know, reset or, or set for the first time. So once you do that, then future on-off cycles, you know, can are perfectly normal. It doesn't require the AC adapter. So. We'll go ahead and get the adapter plugged in here. See the adapter is plugged in and we have the power charge and uh, power on LEDs. I'll go ahead and unplug that. In fact, you can see the scope is already turned on. Just simply putting that power on does turn the scope on that first time. And then if we were to turn the scope on again, of course it turns on normally. So now it's functioning on the battery power. There's no LED lights when it's just operating on the batteries alone, which is perfectly normal. So now the scope is fully portable as it was intended to be originally and it functions very very well with those batteries. So with that installed in there this original cover just goes right back in place here like that and you know if you kind of shake the scope around a little bit it's very solid doesn't move at all in there so really well thought out very well designed and it can charge you can leave it plugged into the charger and there's no issues with uh, you know leaving it plugged in the the charging circuitry will take over and do what it needs to do the cells won't overcharge and uh, you know it can stay plugged in with all that circuitry that's on that board uh, the current draw is is just minuscule uh, when it's turned when the scope is actually turned off so um, even though that you know is certainly more complex than the original sealed lead acid battery with the additional charging circuitry and that board in there. Um, it functions really well and um, ultimately gives a longer life on the battery capacity and the runtime on the scope, I should say, is, is much longer. So pretty cool upgrade and uh, really brings some new life into these scopes. So with that, we have the scope working and ready to go do some troubleshooting. So if you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up, and until next time, goodbye.